golden-headed cysticola, or is it cysticola? Though I know a little Greek, I know very little about Latin, and cysticola is a combination of Greek and Latin. Cystaceae is the Greek for the rock rose of the Mediterranean, where leaves on the branch are opposite one another, and the Latin colore means I protect. And so the Mediterranean cysticola, nesting within these briars of thorny rose bushes, has a protected home. So the anglicisation from Greek and Latin is either cysticola or cysticola, and I suspect either is correct, meaning a home amongst the thorny roses. So with the Mediterranean genus name, and the birds being found in Australia, you can imagine the cysticolidae have a wide distribution throughout the world, and today we want to look at one in particular, the golden-headed cysticola. This thorny rose is a rambling rose, not a Mediterranean rose, but it serves the same purpose as a protective home for the breeding golden-headed cysticola. But in reality we find the golden-headed cysticola more in the grass. Just listen to this little golden-headed cysticola sing. Now this bird doesn't have a golden head, he's got a striated cap. And the true golden head is only seen in the adult breeding male. There are approximately 30 species of cysticola. All being small insectivorous singing birds, they were once grouped as warblers within the family of Sylviidae, reflecting the old world taxonomy. But now they are in their own family, Cysticolidae. Look at this little golden-headed cysticola, dancing around in the grass. You can see why in Australia it was referred to as the grass warbler for many years. In fact, if you go back to someone like Gould, who did beautiful sketching, or his wife was the artist, painting the birds of Australia, he had the golden-headed bird separated from the striated-headed bird, thinking that they were different species. Damp grass areas are where the golden-headed cysticola lives and breeds. But it will go up onto the top of a tree, or the top of a grass head, to sing when it is in breeding mode in summer. Let's look at some of the features of the golden-headed cysticola. And here a small bird that's got striations over the cap. The belly, chest and throat are pale with a yellow tint with the absence of a tan buff in this case. The lower bill has a component of pink. Going back to the gape, just below the eye, there is a touch of yellow. The legs are slightly pink and the iris is tan. The wings and the back of the bird are a combination of light tan and dark brown. In this bird there is no black, and there are many features of the typical golden-headed cysticola. But here the yellow gape and the absence of tan on the chest tells us that this is an immature bird of indeterminate sex. Here a bird without striations on the cap but has the golden head and such a short tail. This is the breeding male, following spider webs through the grass, for it feeds not only on insects, but also arachnids. Another full-blown breeding male, with a golden head. The bill opens, no noise comes, until just before the bill is closed. At this last point, you hear a cheep. The same again at the high point on the shio, the bird is calling. The bird is mute when the bill opens, nothing comes out. It's only at the point of bill closure do we hear the vocalised cheep. The call of the cysticola is interesting. I'm uncertain why some birds have this mute absence of initial sound. The typical sound should be a buzz, then a cheep. But I've noticed many times some birds that appear mute can then make the buzzing sound. So I suspect it's part of the variations of the whereabouts call either to the mate or the dependent young. Tan on the chest, with a white throat, without a yellow tint, the mature cysticola. The question is whether it's male or female. If it's a male, it's not in breeding plumage, for there are still striations on the cap. The overall tan colour of this bird is strong, and the darks are giving good contrast, suggesting this bird is an adult, 
and one further point needs to be considered, that is the length of the tail. And here the tail is of reasonable size, suggesting a female. And the tip of the tail, not the whole length, but just the tip, is fairly dark, but not quite black. So this bird is a mature bird, most likely a female, but we cannot be certain about the sex at this point. For comparison, here is an immature bird of indeterminate sex. Now here we have a male golden-headed sister collar, but it's in molt. There are a few black spots on the cap, and it was taken towards the end of summer at the end of breeding. And the tail is not excessively short. A male coming out of breeding mode. Here a typical feeding pattern of the golden-headed sister collar going from grass head to grass head, here on the reed grass, gleaning insects and arachnids. Now you would think that these birds will eat nearly all insects, but they are very selective, and here in this she oak, you can see that little insect. But the bird is not interested in it as a meal. Feeding takes place more in the morning and later on the birds will start to flit around, going through shrubs and at the top of grass, but always on the lookout for a tasty spider. In this bird, the dark browns have been replaced by black. There is enormous contrast. The canary yellow wash over the belly is still present, but there is also considerable tan and a very black cap. This is a typical mature breeding female. Separating the sexes of the golden-headed cysticola has never been easy. Going back to Gould, that famous ornithologist, he believed that the breeding male was a separate species. So perhaps don't get too worried about the minutiae of differences. It can be subtle and I can be wrong. The same bird has a spider in the mouth on the flight. So the food is being carried, presumably, to young at her nest, confirming this bird is a breeding female. Instead of a buzz, this young bird bleats like a lamb. Yellow on the throat, reduced intensity of colour, an immature, golden-headed cysticola that we cannot sex. Another male with a little bit more deviation in the classical appearance. Notice how the cap of the golden head is very pale. In fact, there can be variation in the colour of the head in the golden-headed cysticola, and some of the southern China subspecies have a very pale head, more cream than that found in the subspecies coming down from Southeast Asia to Australia. The golden-headed cysticola in Australia is called Cysticola exilis. Exilis meaning small and there are approximately 10 subspecies of cysticola between India, China and Australasia. Cysticolas are one of the birds that when they change their position can abduct or move their legs away from the central position. The greater majority of passerine birds can do this but the cysticola is the supreme gymnast at diverging from a parallel stance. An adult male with a short black tail in the non-breeding male, it is longer and tan in colour. An adult breeding male with a very pale cap, again at the end of summer, and I suspect this bird is going into molt, as it feeds amongst the flowers, not eating nectar or seed, but it knows that the insects will be found around these points. Again, a few birds that are juveniles. These are usually found in summer and can be identified because of the canary yellow wash to the front of the bird. The pinkish bill with a yellow gape and the lack of intensity and the contrasting colours over the back and wings. The darker tan adult bird flies off, leaving this immature juvenile bird. When they are side by side, it's so much easier to pick the adults from the juveniles. 
another pair perch together on the rambling rose. The mature male adult flies off, leaving the immature bird with a pale yellow belly. Now right at the end of summer, this yellow wash of young birds disappears. And here you can see the dark contrast of the adult bird and the younger birds with less contrast. And the belly, chest and throat are now white. The lemon yellow colour has gone. Here in this bush, another example of an immature bird with minimal contrast and on the right, a yellow-breasted, high-contrast, probable breeding female bird. However, it soon flew up into the she-oak and I became convinced that it was just another immature bird. A quick review with still shots of the various morphologies of the golden-headed sister cola of the subspecies Exilis as seen in Australia. Having covered the difficult morphological appearance of the golden-headed cysticola, we're going to go into an even more grey area, and that is the bird song and the bird call of the golden-headed cysticola. We will begin with the call of this mature bird. I suspect a female, but I cannot be certain about the sex. Listen for the whereabouts call, the buzz, cheep, as this bird preens and watches insects flying about. Notice that not every buzz is followed by a cheep. Unfortunately, as the wind rises, so it breaks into song. So it seems that the females do have song. More repetitive than the male that we will hear in a moment. Notice it tracks insects flying through the air. I have never seen one of these birds catch an insect on the fly. Most feeding is done off the grass by gleaning or from the ground grass. And now a classical male with its buzz then cheep. Not every buzz is followed by cheep. Many warblers will continue their warble into a flight. Often this is very close to the vertical and some believe that it is a mating ritual. And the cysticola also participates in this exercise. The male cysticola often calls from the top of a shrub or a tree. The cap of this bird has striations. It is very rufous, so it's a mature bird, but it breaks out into a full-blown song, so I suspect it is a male, but cannot be certain. Just to emphasise again, the golden-headed cysticola is a bird of damp grass areas. And here in the grass and surrounding shrubs like the roses, it feeds, lives and breeds. But there are other birds that live in the grass, so let's just take a look at these and see if we can tell the difference from the golden-headed cysticola. Well, this bird is blue, and it doesn't look anything like a cysticola. This is the superb fairy wren and often inhabits the same area. The female, however, is also a fawn bird about the same size, but it has a longer tail and there are no black markings over the wings or the back. And the call is more repetitive at a much higher pitch. And the blue male is usually about keeping an eye on the female and juvenile fawn birds. The emu wren with a long vertical tail, but the easiest way to distinguish it from the golden-headed cysticola 
is to look at the chest and neck. It is rufous, whereas the cysticula is very pale. The reed warbler. It has a more tapered head coming out of the bill, but the most important differentiation is the eyebrow. The golden-headed cysticula doesn't have an eyebrow, and with the feeding pattern of the reed warbler, it is usually found over water, because most of its feeding is done taking insects off the surface water. Its call is also quite different. The little grass bird, the one most difficult to separate from the golden-headed cysticula, but it has a longer tail and also it has a supercilium. It's larger than the cysticula. Its call is quite distinctive. Here, the little grass bird cysticula and fairy wren are all in the same shot. You can see the difference in the tail and the size of the birds. Another bird having back markings just like the golden-headed cysticula with brown and fawn is the Australasian pippin. And like the cysticula, it has white on the throat. But it is a larger bird and has an even more pronounced supercilium or eyebrow. The other difference is that the pippet prefers more open grassland, so it's unusual to find them within the dense grass that the golden head prefers. Finally, the rufous songlark. Again, a larger bird, prominent supercilium that also feeds in more open grass areas. This concludes our video on the golden-headed cysticula, or cysticula exilis, the Australian subspecies. All the video has been taken on the New South Wales east coast. We have enjoyed putting this together and I hope you have enjoyed watching it. If you would like to see more Australian birds in the wild, hit the subscribe button then notifications.